coming up on Marcus and Joni. Sergio Hornung pastors the largest church in Peru. He joins us from our Jerusalem studio. Plus, he's changing lives in Nicaragua. We sit down with Arsenio Herrera. And Olin Griffin shares his spirit-filled ministry. Daystar Studio in Jerusalem, Israel. Marcus and Joni. Hello, everybody. Joni and I are so excited that you've joined us live from our Daystar Studio in Jerusalem, Israel. And Joni, right over our shoulders, you can see the Dome of the Rock yes. and the beautiful old city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Well, we are so excited that you are watching us and all of you that are watching uh, from around the world. We are here in the holy city of Jerusalem. We have some great guests in store for you today. And uh, we thought we would go back a little bit in time and tell the Marcus and Joni backstory of how we got here to Israel. Let's watch this together. March of 1983, Joni and I went to the Holy Land for the very first time. We had only been married six months, and I had no idea that our whole future lay before us, and we would be impacted in such a significant and prophetic way there in the land of the Bible. We were on the Mount of Olives, and the still, small voice of the Lord spoke to me. And he said, go to Montgomery, Alabama and build the first Christian TV station in the history of the state. I said, I don't know how to build a TV station, much less a Christian TV station. And then he spoke and he reiterated his command. He said, go and build that station. And now... We're on in every country of the world. And to be able to add to that, the first and only full-time Christian TV network owned all over Israel. You know, here in the land of the Bible, the Holy Spirit is so great. I was telling our tour group as I was preaching on the Sea of Galilee, when you pray from Israel, it's not a long distance call. This is the closest that you're ever going to be to the Lord unless you're with him in person. So I want to invite you to take advantage of this opportunity and to call the number that's on the screen right now to get prayed for while we are in Israel. Yes. Or if you're high tech like Joni, go online to daystar.com and click on prayer. And at the end of this program, we're going to pray. So get your prayer call into Jerusalem. Rachel, Rebecca, two of the most fabulous girls. I could look at y'all and do two things. I could smile because you make me so happy. And I could cry because I love you both so much. And I'm so proud of you. And I know that we now have another little baby girl lamb in the family. We do. So, Rachel, who is that? Little Ariel Isabella. She's just born, what, November 2nd, just a few days Six ago. Six pounds and two ounces. Gorgeous. 18 and a half inches long. We, we do have a photo, and we have an email from our dear friend, Moshi. All right, well, tell everybody who Ariel is. Who are her parents? Well, Jonathan and Susie Lamb, our son, look at and beautiful her. daughter in love. Oh goodness. Look and at there that she hair. is. Head full of dark hair, and that she is, is less beautiful. Than a week old right there. And she's yes. got a full head of hair. And Moshi, he sent this email. He said, Dear Marcus and Joni, congratulations and Mazel Tov for beautiful Ariel. It is a miracle of God that two beautiful names, Israel and Ariel, biblical name for Jerusalem and Isaiah 29, were chosen for your beautiful grandchildren. It is a gift of love from God for your heart and love towards Israel and the Jewish people. Sincerely, Moshe and Irene. And, you know, this is what we did not know, and it so amazed us. 
course, we've got little Israel, Elisha Lamb. I don't know if we have his picture or not, but you've seen him a lot. But uh, we did not know that Ariel is another name for Jerusalem, yeah. and it's found in Isaiah chapter 29. So I want to put that verse up so you can see, and Moshe told us about that. Yeah, Becca's going to read the and verse. I was going to read it. <laughs> I read the verse to us then. So the verse is, woe to you, Ariel, Ariel, the city where David settled, Isaiah 29, 9. So Jonathan got so tickled when he heard that, and he said, Wow. So now we've got an Israel and a Jerusalem. Oh, well. I mean, now all they need is a Tel Aviv. Rachel, maybe you can take that name over. And we'll have all of Israel covered. Oh, what does that my. that you're going to do? You want to take Judah, maybe? Oh, I'll take Judah. Yeah, Say Judah, Judah means Judah praise. Right. See, well, in first. just a little while, <laughs> this is going to so bless you because it has been a, a desire of my heart for many years for our sweet Rebecca to join her mother and the Daystar Singers in singing, and they sung on the rooftop yes, of did. our studio here in Jerusalem. And it was very cold. Very and we cold. praised from the rooftop. We did. We yes, did. we did. But in anyway, Jerusalem. the way awesome. that Daystar is on television, let me just quickly explain this to you. There are two multi-channel TV providers in Israel, Hot Cable, which has about 55% of all of the homes in Israel, and Yes, which is direct to home satellite. In America, it would be like Direct TV Dish Network. In the UK, it would be kind of like B Sky B. Mm -hmm. So those two systems combined, 55% hot, 44% yes, have 99% of the homes in Israel. And we are so humbled because Daystar remains the first and only full-time Christian TV network that is on both of these systems. So... We've got a spot that tells you more about that. Let's go to that right now. Israel is watching Daystar, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on Hot Cable Channel 72 and Yes Channel 49. Daystar remains the only full-time Christian TV network that is on all of the homes in Israel. Providing Bible-based hope and encouragement from the best speakers, preachers, and teachers in the world. Keep watching and supporting the only Christian network broadcasting into every home in Israel. Daystar, Hot Channel 72, and Yes Channel 49 in Israel. And Joni, it's so neat because not only is it on in all the homes in Israel, but in most of the hotels. We were at the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. Daystar was on in our hotel room, and here in Jerusalem, Daystar was on. So we're getting ready to introduce this song, maybe the greatest song in the history of the Christian church. Worship with the Daystar Singers as we sing here at our studio here in Jerusalem on the rooftop, Amazing Grace.
Shalom. This is Jonathan Kong, author of The Harbinger and the Mystery of the Shemitah. If you are born again today, if you've been blessed by God, you've been blessed through Israel, through the Jewish people, the Lord has opened up a door for Daystar to get the gospel to Israel. So it's so crucial. And God promises those who do this, those who bless Israel, shall be blessed. So be part. The time is now. You have to be a light. If you have the light inside of you, you have to shine it. There's a world out there that doesn't have the gospel. And the reason why God still has us on earth, he doesn't have to, is so we can spread it. And the greatest way you'll ever fulfill your calling is to spread that gospel. Christians have waited for centuries for this day that we have and this opportunity that is now. So be part, call, give, and do whatever you can to bless Israel. God will bless you. Well, Joni and I are live in our Jerusalem studios. And I want to encourage you. There's a wonderful presence of the Lord here. And if you'd like for us to pray in the place that's probably closest to the heart of God, call the number that's on the screen or go to daystar.com and click on prayer. Joni, there's something very special laying on this table. It's called the, the Book of Remembrance. And if you'd hand that to me, we had a professional calligraphographer, if that is the name, how to pronounce it, who hand wrote the name of every person who gave a thousand dollars or more to buy this and pay for this building. And there's just set that, you know, there's several thousand names in there, I guess. I haven't counted them up, at least several hundred names. And so I just wanted to thank you because every time we come, I'm going to speak a blessing over you because you made it possible. Now, the second thing, very quickly, is many of you pledged or gave $2,000 for what we call the Second Mile Partners to renovate this facility. Mm -hmm. Now, we've hired the contractor. We've hired the architect. The plans have been drawn. The application has been applied for through the municipality of the city of Jerusalem. But we have not received the written approval yet. We have received a verbal approval. So that's why we haven't done the renovations yet. But quickly, what will happen is we're going to raise this ceiling about two or three feet. We're going to double the size of this studio. And uh, we're going to be able to have a much better area. We're going to have a place for singers and for more guests. Yes. So it's just going to be so much better, an even bigger view of the city. So be patient with us. And when all those pledges come in, then the, the plaque is going to be on the wall for all of you who pledged that $2,000. Yes. And uh, let me just say this because I feel like I should, not because we need it, but because I feel like the Lord wants me to and that he wants somebody to be in, involved in that. If while this program is going on today... If you feel moved in your heart, in your spirit, if you feel like the Lord is wanting you to be one of those $2,000 partners to, to just renovate and increase this studio to be more effective for the Lord, then call that number today. And if you need to pledge it over a 12-month period, you're welcome to do that. Well, Joni, one of our favorite ministers in all of the world, mm -hmm. Pastor Olin Griffin, he has been our friend for 20-something years. Yes. For many years, he was the senior pastor of Shady Grove Church, a mega church there in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And today, he serves as one of the apostolic elders for Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas, along with our pastor, Robert Morris. We love Pastor Owen Griffin, don't we? We do. And he was pastor to our pastor. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's right. So you were Pastor Morris's pastor for how many years? Sixteen years. Yeah. Okay, was he a good member? He was an excellent <laughs> <laughs> He's my pastor now, I've got to say that. That's right. That's well, awesome. I want us to go back mm -hmm. in time because testimonies are irresistible. And here you are today, this beautiful, white-haired, godly man with all these decades of experience in the ministry. But it wasn't always like that, was it? No, it wasn't. Tell us about your life before you came to Christ and how you came to know the Lord and how did your life change? Well, I was raised in a pastor's home and I did not like the church. I didn't like my experience I'd had 
with the local congregations, and um, so I never received the Lord. So sometimes the church people are mean to the I'm, pastor I'm and their kids, you, aren't I'm they? I'm telling you, I I had my feelings hurt really bad. Took up an offense from my dad many times. So um, I, I didn't come to know the Lord until I was 30 years old, and I just I lived in the world and wow. uh, was married and had a wife and two children. And I just reached the end of my rope. I did, it, life wasn't worth living anymore. And I went to a church meeting. My wife encouraged me to go and um, in her way. And I heard a pastor preach on Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And he said this. Some of you have been trying to live the Christian life and you've failed. He said there's only one person that's ever lived the Christian life. There's only one person that ever will live the Christian life, and his name is Jesus. And something happened in my heart that night, and I received him into my life. Changed my life forever. Hallelujah. Totally walked in one way, walked out another way. I know that... uh, The Holy Spirit and gifts of the Spirit and uh, working of miracles, et cetera, et cetera, are, are all important to you and your ministry. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about how you came into the fullness of understanding the Holy Spirit. I was in a Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in a, in a class concerning mass evangelism. And they were talking about the effect of the Holy Spirit over a region. And I just... Dawned, it just dawned on me that I don't think I thought of the Holy Spirit as a person. So I began a search. I found a book by R.A. Torrey called The Person and Work of the Holy Spirit. I read that book. I was so convicted until I went to the basement prayer room at the seminary, prayed to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right there, and I did. Wow. Yeah. So your background was Southern Baptists and you know, many Southern Baptists today believe in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, but back then, a lot of them did not. Oh, they did not. In fact, it was a lightning rod, so to speak. So some controversy. Yes. But you persevered <clears throat> on, and then Shady Grove, it impacted the world for so many years, especially in missions and praise and worship. And you and your wife, Sybil, have had a love for Israel for a long time. And evidence by, you told me, that y'all have an apartment right here in Israel. And about three months out of the year, you live here in Jerusalem. Is that, that right? That is true. We do. Why? But, Why do you love Israel love, so much? We, we love Israel. We just love the people. God's put a love in our hearts for them and for this, this land and the people. But for more than, more than that, in Ezekiel 36, particularly around verse 23 or so, it talks about that when I am hallowed in the eyes of my people, Israel, then the nations round about will know that I am the Lord God. Mm. And so my heart is to see Jewish people come to know their Messiah. And in doing that, seeing Israel saved, it, it's going to bring world evangelism to the forefront. Based on your knowledge of the scripture and all of your many years of ministry, how miraculous is it that Daystar, as a gospel channel, is on TV in all the homes of Israel? How amazing is that? This is God's plan. God has you here for this hour. And I believe we're on the edge, on the cusp of, of a world revival. It's going to start right here. Mm. Pastor Griffin, there are people watching today. They are where you were before. They're brokenhearted, they're sad, they're despondent. Maybe there's some hurt feelings, Mm -hmm. there's some sadness. Can you encourage them today, just like a pastor would, just whatever the Holy Spirit says, would you look in that camera and talk to the viewers around the world? If you don't have peace, if you don't understand what life is all about, if you're having struggles, I encourage you to turn to the Word of God, prayer, prayer, Ask Jesus to come into your heart. I'm telling you, you'll never, ever regret it. It is like starting a brand new life all over. In fact, it is. So I would encourage you to simply say, I can't do it. I have tried. There's no way I can please God. 
but I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life and live your life through me. If you'll do that, I promise you, and the word promise you, you'll change. You'll love it. You know, I really sense God's presence here today. And I don't believe it's an accident or a coincidence that you've tuned in. God loves you so very much. His plan for your life is so amazing. If he were to go ahead and show it to you, you would be so excited. But today, if you need to draw closer to him, if you need to experience his love, his tenderness, his kindness. I love that verse in Lamentations 3.23 which says His mercies are new every morning. So today is a new day for you. It's a new opportunity for you. His mercies are new for you today. No matter what you did yesterday or what you did last week or last month or last year, today is a new day. And if you'll call that number and let us pray with you, I believe that God is going to touch you, especially as we pray Live from Jerusalem, Israel. Joni? Take about a minute, if you would, Pastor, and encourage uh, people who are watching right now why it's so important to stand with Israel in this hour. Well, for one thing, the whole world is beginning to stand against Israel. And we need the support of believers. We have the same roots in our history, Abraham and Jesus, Yeshua. And, and if we stand with them in prayer, I believe we will usher in a revival here. It's very important because the gospel goes to the Jew first, according yes. to Romans 1, and then to the Gentiles. And I feel like our obligation is to bring the message of Jesus, not for people to quit being Jews, but to be fulfilled in their Jewishness. It'll change the world. I believe the world revival is going to issue out of here. For the word of the Lord will go forth from Zion. And that's what you're doing. You know, it actually even says from Mount Zion. From Mount Zion. we are on Mount Zion. Absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you stand with Daystar and stand with Israel, you are literally helping to fulfill in time Mm -hmm. Bible prophecy. Mm -hmm. I really hope that you'll be one of our second mile partners. I want to put your name on the plaque that every time we come into this studio, we're going to see your name and I give you my word. And Joni will tell you, if I say I'll do it, I will do it. I will lay my hand on that plaque Mm. and I will ask God for his greatest blessing to be fulfilled in the life and the family of every person that becomes a second mile partner. So if you feel a leading about that, call that number today and tell our prayer partners. And again, if you need to do it over a 12 month period, that'll be fine. And that's going to help us renovate, enlarge Mm -hmm. and double the size of this studio. So it'll be more effective for the gospel. Well, stay tuned because in just a moment, a tremendous pastor from Managua, Nicaragua. So you have to roll your R's. That's right. <laughs> His name is Arsenio Herrera, and he has a church of about 10,000 people. So don't change that dial. We'll be back live in just a moment. He's spreading the gospel to souls in Nicaragua. We hear how Arsenio Herrera is making an impact. There's been a remarkable change in the relationship between Jews and Christians and between Israel uh, and Christians. And we know that we have tremendous support among the Christian community in the United States. Tens of millions of people I see all the time, wherever I go. Israel is the only solid, reliable, democratic ally of the United States, an ally that shares your interests and your values. In standing together, we are fighting in our common defense. We are fighting to secure our common future. So we should, I think, cherish the relationship we have between Israel and the United States and work day after day, week after week, to strengthen it and to ensure that it becomes stronger than ever. We appreciate very much any support for our soldiers. We think that in defending the state of Israel, they're not only defending us, they're also defending you. Thank you, Daystar Partners, for supporting Israel. We appreciate your support. 
Well, that was the Honorable Ron Dermer, who is yes. the Israeli ambassador to the United States of America. And recently, we were invited by him to uh, go to the embassy, the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. So we yeah. appreciate Ambassador Dermer. And we are excited about being here in Israel. We have a tour with us. We've been going to all the beautiful sites here. And we just had a marvelous time meeting a lot of our partners. favorite thing I got to do is I got a fresh pomegranate and they squeezed <laughs> yes. it and made me some pomegranate juice. Yes. And it was so very, very great. It was. Well, you know, God is pouring out his re spirit and sending mighty revival yes. amongst the Latin community in South America and Central America in particular. And we have with us today Pastor Arsenio Herrera from Managua, Nicaragua. And we've got a map to show you right where that is. Let's look at that right now. We're going by way of satellite. This is so cool. We're going to zoom in on his house if we can. There it is. Okay. <laughs> there it is. Pastor Herrera, welcome. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor, for having us here. I want to find out about how you came to Christ. What was Arsenio's life like before Christ and after Christ? Well, I wasn't thinking about the Lord in any way. I wasn't a part of any religion. And one day I was in my business, just and somebody came to me and he goes, I have some people that I need to take to a place. Can you take them? He didn't say to what. So I said, okay, I'll do it. But I was in, in, in witchcraft, metaphysic and wow. many kind of occultism and all that stuff. So, so you were searching? No. I was searching in the wrong place. Right. Yeah. But uh, when we went to that place and I got out of the car, I felt something that came over me. And in my mind, I thought something powerful is here. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to close my business. I'm going to bring my wife. I'm gonna, and I want to check what's going on here. What was this place? Uh, it was on the street. This pastor from Costa Rica just came and did a crusade on the on the street. Wow. And so I went back, closed the restaurant, and when I came, I was standing right behind the altar where he was preaching. And he started saying, I didn't hear the message. I didn't know what was going on. But when I was there, he started saying, like, there is a person here. And he started describing my life. And when he was speaking, he goes, the Lord wants to heal you. And I said, that's me. And he goes, you need to come over here. And I said, if I go there and somebody else goes, then they'll say, it's not you. And I didn't want to get, be embarrassed. So what happened is he did the second time, and he goes, if he's not in front of me, he's in back of me. And I was the only person. I was wow. almost crying, but I was so hard that, that I didn't want to you know, receive Jesus. So he sent all the people away. Nobody received the Lord. And when he was coming down the stairs, he, he looked and he goes, it is you. God is telling me it is you. And Praise I started God. crying. I said, I knew it was me. And I, I, was, so, I was so surprised because I didn't know what was happening. And he goes, do you want to receive the Lord? And I said, yes. And I thought we were going to do it downstairs. But then he went up the altar and he started calling people that were leaving. He goes, I found the man. And God is speaking to me. And I want you to hear what God is going to say. So people came back, and we went up the altar, and he gave me a prophetic word where he was saying that the Holy Spirit was going to train me and that I had a calling, and, and I received it. I, I, I changed that day. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I just knew something has changed in my heart, and since that day, I wasn't the same person. It was so radical, the change, that my wife goes, oh, I don't want to be a, the wife of a pastor. If you become a pastor, I'll divorce you. Because, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but that day, something very, very strong happened in my heart. I, I never saw life. Okay. So your wife was totally against it at first, but then I bet she saw a change in you. This is what happened. When I was going to be baptized three months after, she goes, you baptize, I'm telling you, I'll divorce you. And she came with me to church. And she was very angry. But I, I feel so bad that I say, I want to be the last person to go into the water because I knew what kind of life I had. 
and I didn't want anybody to get in the pool after me. <laughs> so that is so funny. <laughs> so I was waiting there, and I, I was the last person, and I was coming out, and I started walking to my wife. And when I was walking to her, I was waiting for her to say something bad. You know, I was scared because I love her. I didn't want to, you know, be divorced. But she came with a towel, and she looked at me, and she goes, I see a change in your eyes. And she hugged me. Praise the And Lord. she goes, since that day, you know, she said, I'll, I'll be right next to you. Praise Whatever God, God takes That's you. That's awesome. Joni, I'll be with you. I've always said, a change life. Yes. It's the greatest miracle of all because a person can't change themselves. That's so powerful, isn't it? You know, the power of God, the presence of God uh, was present when you went to that service and heard that preacher. You didn't know what that was. You had searched in all these other different places and avenues looking for an answer to, to find real peace and fulfillment. And it's so neat to me to hear your story. I know there are people watching right now. You're searching you're looking, and I just want to tell you that as we talk about this, the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. That's right. He loves you today, and He wants to touch you just like He touched Pastor. And so, Pastor, would you just take a moment, and just as you feel directed by the Holy Spirit, and minister to those who are watching right now, especially those who are searching. And let me just say this to qualify Him, because a lot of you don't know this. He now has a church of 10,000 people. I mean, he went from witchcraft and the occult, not knowing anything about church or God or Christianity, and the Lord totally revolutionized his life. Pastor Arsenio, just minister as the Lord leads you. I'll, when God called me, I just say to the Lord this. I say, I want you to be with me. If you really ask me if I want to do this, I might say no. But I'm going to ask you for one thing. Just be with me. And I remember the first meeting we had at our home. And it was supposed to be at 7. We invited people and nobody was there about 7, 10. So I went into my room. That was This was about eight months after I received the Lord. And I said, God, I, I ask you only for one thing. I ask you if you want me to do this, just be with me. And I don't see anybody here. And... I heard the Holy Spirit spoke to me for the first time clearly, and the Holy Spirit told me this. Are you worried because you're going to look bad or because you really love the soul of the people? Wow. And I started crying, and I said, Lord, I'm going to go out. If one person comes, I'm going to love that person. Yes. And I came out. Fifty people came after that. Wow. So what I'll say is that God wants to use, use us all. And he just want to that to get to get the glory and to love the people. You know, if, if we are in our heart ready to give him the glory and love his people, there is no limit what he can do with us. So, Johnny, will you hand me those? I want you to see. I feel the Holy Spirit so great. We, they are faxing your prayer request and those of you that are pledging for the, the studio here. They're sending it all to us here in Jerusalem. And we're going to pray. If God could supernaturally transform Arsenio Herrera in Nicaragua, He can transform you today. Maybe it's your husband that's back to on God. Maybe it's your children whose hearts have grown hard. Jesus loves them today. And He loves you so much that He wants to grant the desire of your heart for all of your family to be saved. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your household or your family. Call that number. So tell us, how did the church begin to grow? How has it reached the number of 10,000 no, I was pastoring today? a church about 40 kilometers from the capital city, and there was a missionary, Pastor David Spencer. He was pastoring in Panama and came to Nicaragua, and the Lord spoke to him because he started a church in Managua, and he planted other churches. And the Lord spoke to, me, to him, and he told him that I was supposed to be his successor. So in in the year 2011 uh, he spoke to me 
So I came from where I was, and now I'm pastoring one, one church in Managua, but, but we already opened one last year in Managua, capital city, and we opening another one in April. And then we have 10 other churches around the, the nation. But the vision that God gave him, and I'm just, you know, taking the baton at this time, is yes. to plan one church in every city of Nicaragua. So we are looking to, to see in the future one church in every city of Nicaragua. We, we believe in for a transformation of the nation. You know, we remember years ago the civil war in Nicaragua. How is it today? Is revival happening? Is the Holy Spirit being poured out? I believe that the name of Nicaragua is going to change in the world. That's what I believe. They, people hear about Nicaragua, about wars, earthquake, disaster, poverty. But I believe in the next year. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise people are going to listen. That God, Glory to God. That God is Hallelujah. glorifying himself. In that nation, he's going to change the name of that nation. Yes, hallelujah. That's what I believe. You know, right here, we're in Israel. God changed a man. His name was Jacob. He had been a deceiver, a plotter, a schemer. But Jacob was hungry for God. And he wrestled with the angel of the Lord. And he said, I will not let go until you bless me. And because of that, even though it took all night long and he had a limp, he was marked the rest of his life with the touch of God. And God said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but it shall be called Israel, a prince that has power with God. So God can change a person. He can change a nation. How many of you will be praying? You'll be praying for Pastor Herrera. You'll be praying for Nicaragua that revival will break out. It will shake the nation and shake all of Central America. I believe God can do it, Joni. I do believe that, and I want you to continue to call. We're going to be praying at the end of the program. Thank you so much, Pastor, for sharing your story. I want to ask him just to pray a prayer. I keep calling today. Keep calling. At the end, we, we've got another great man of God yes. to get up your prayer into Jerusalem. Oh my goodness, how special is that as we're alive here on Mount Zion. Pastor Herrera, if you'll just stretch your hand towards the camera as people are watching live all over the world and just speak a prayer. But I want you to speak it in Espanol. And Espanol. somebody told me that in heaven uh, we're going to speak Spanish because it's the language of love. So would you <laughs> speak it in, in Espanol? Padre, yo te doy gracias en este día y pido que tu presencia de donde está Ministra a cada persona que está necesitando un toque tuyo. Que tú, Señor, les hagas saber que tú los amas, que tú tienes planes con ellos. Hablame. Y que tú eres un Dios de amor, de misericordia, de justicia. Que nos conoció desde antes de la fundación del mundo y nos formó en el vientre de nuestra madre. Así que pido, Dios, que ellos se encuentren contigo y toda su vida sea transformada en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. En el nombre de Jesús. Hallelujah. Amen. The name, the name of Jesus. He loves you today. Why don't you just begin to worship Him right there where you are? Do you sense the Holy Spirit, Espirito de Santo? Just worship the Lord. Praise Him today. Glorify Him today. You know, I'm not much of a singer, but I have a song in my heart. I can't sing like my Joni or like my my Becca or the Daystar singers. But we can all have a song in our heart. We can all lift our voice and make a joyful noise into the Lord. Joni, tell us about this great song y'all are about to sing. Well, we're here in Jerusalem, have the Daystar Singers here. We sang on top of the rooftop overlooking the beautiful city of Jerusalem, 10,000 Reasons.
Israel. Cultural and political events as they happen. 
Reported unbiased by secular agendas. Israel Now News. This exciting partnership between Daystar and Israel brings you informative, unprejudiced news right from the Holy Land. And Jews could absolutely not participate in an election on Yom Kippur. Every Saturday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, Israel Now News, only on Daystar. Well, I'm so glad to introduce to you today uh, the pastors of Iglesia Agua Viva. Mm-hmm. You know what that means, Iglesia Agua Viva? I'm sure you're going to tell me. That means Church of Living Water. Yeah. And, you know, water is a metaphor for the Holy Spirit in the scriptures. And so we have Sergio and Carla Hornung. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And they have, like, I think 10 different campuses, and they have 60,000 people in their church. So let's say hello to Sergio and to Carla. And Carla is a... Well, not a gringo. She's a gringa. <laughs> so, in other words, you you are not Hispanic. So, tell me, how did you meet Miss Carla? Well, that, I'm going to do that short version. Okay. okay. And, um, her grandparents were missionaries in Peru like 40 years ago. So, they met my parents. Or were, they were my parents' first teachers, Bible teachers. So, we, we grew kind together. Then we were separate for for a while, and then we saw each other about 15 years ago, mm-hmm. and we started Aww. the relationship again. And, yeah. And so, is it four kids? Is that right? Four kids. Yeah. That's a bunch. <laughs> mm. So, did you have any idea that the Lord would bring you two together, Carla? Um, God told me when I was a child to study Spanish, and that was going to be in South America. My grandparents had pulled out and were based in Kiev, and my siblings were all learning Russian, but God told me to learn Spanish, and that was going to be in South America, so I did. So you Aww. learned Spanish. I learned Spanish. That's amazing. It's good that you learned Spanish and not Russian, because I don't <laughs> think Pastor Sergio would have yeah. understood Russian. We've got some pictures of uh, Church of the Living Water there in Lima, Peru, and we want to show you those pictures and uh, Pastor Sergio maybe you can just talk over what it is that we'll be seeing sure. on the screen. So there's what you say there's 10 different eight. Oh, eight, eight different locations. Eight different locations in Lima and 20 around Peru. Oh. And so there we see inside the uh, congregation Yeah. and you have was it 50 services yeah. over the weekend? Yeah. That's our main auditorium. It's How many will that hold or seat? 20,000. 20,000? Wow. Yeah, that's, wow. that's the biggest indoor arena in the country. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And it's being used for the Lord. God gave it to us, yeah. Yeah. That is so amazing. Well, that must be getting the attention of both the city and the national officials that a church has a 20,000 seat arena. Yeah. It's been amazing how the Lord gave us this place uh, seven years ago, and we've been remodeling the the venue, and now we are using it every weekend for our services. Well, let's go by way of satellite to Lima, Peru, so you can see where Pastor Sergio and Carla live. There it goes. This is so cool. And Joni's already liking Lima, Peru because it's on the ocean. Yes. She's an ocean girl. (laughs) That is so tremendous. That was good for Carla because she grew up in Florida, so the Lord knew she needed to be close to water, right? Yeah. (laughs) All right, so tell us about is revival happening in the church? Are miracles happening? Maybe each of you could share a story or two. Yeah, um, we've seen so many miracles in the last past I mean, three, four years, uh, the growing of the church has been, you know, exponential. And um, recently a lady came to me and said that she came to one of our services uh, with one of his relatives. And this relative went to the doctor, four different doctors, and every doctor said that he had eight, eight See that? Mm-hmm. Wow. So we prayed for him, and then he came back two weeks later and said that he went back to the four doctors that 
uh, he saw previously, and uh, four doctors uh, told him that he's he's uh, healed, wow. complete healed. So uh, this is something that I just heard like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So I and just want to share that because it was like uh, something recently, you know. And that's incurable. Mm -hmm. Only God could do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Doctors. Medicine, science cannot cure it. Mm -hmm. If you need prayer today, in just a moment, mm -hmm. we're going to ask Pastor Sergio and Carla to pray over all these prayer requests. And hundreds, hundreds wow. have already come wow. and been faxed to us live here in Jerusalem. Wow. I'd go online or I'd call that number because there is a great anointing here. Mm -hmm. Carla, what's a story that comes to your mind? Well, just this past weekend, we had a special event and we invited people to bring in their families and more than 4,000 people got saved. Mm. 4,000? It just feels so special to be a part of what God's doing because we know that it's a revival. It's not us. People mm -hmm. aren't going to come to see us. That many people wouldn't get saved. It's because the Holy Spirit's there and he's moving mm -hmm. and he's healing and he's speaking and it's exciting and people are coming. So. Pastor Sergio, I know that your heart and vision mm -hmm. is for the next generation. Yeah. Why is that? Because we believe in the next generation, we we really believe that the 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 revival is coming with the next generation. We really feel it, and we are working hard. That's our passion. That's where our heart is, and uh, we are praying and doing our best effort to raise uh, a group of leaders that really can reach the next generation in our country and in all the world. Actually, would you look into the camera and challenge? teenagers and young adults all around the world give them a challenge from God to go and do something great for God mm. I want to challenge you uh, my friend to really uh, embrace the calling of God in your life God has a big destiny and a great future for you so just believe and go for it God bless you well, I want to encourage it again get your prayer call in God's Spirit is being poured out all over the world. God is not a white, mm. blonde-haired, blue-eyed American God. Mm. God loves all the world. He created all the world. He loves all of the people. And I'm glad that He didn't make us look all the same, act all the same, talk all the same. I love God's beautiful variety. We see the handiwork of God, don't we, Joni, when we see all of mm. His people. We really do. And Carla, I know that uh, you have that same passion to see young people touched. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you like to say to someone watching right now that maybe feels discouraged or wonders, you know, I don't even know if I really want to have a relationship with God. What would you say? Well, being young is such a crucial point of when you really decide to be for God. When I was a kid, like I was shared before, it's when God really spoke to me. But because I was praying, and I was praying not because I was a great person, but because I was going through really hard times. And I know when you're young, there's so many temptations, there's so many friends telling you to do so many things that you know are wrong. Maybe you've already done things that you aren't proud of. But I would really encourage you to just shake off the guilt yes. and get with God. Ask God what He wants to do with your life. He still has great plans. I know so many youth, so many young people that already think that they've blown it and God can't use them, but God can use you. God does forgive, God does erase, and God still has great plans for you. So if there's a dream God's placed in your heart, don't bury it because you've messed up once or twice. Take that back out. Ask God what He wants you to do and just go do it. Amen. We're That's getting ready word. to pray. There's, prob there's several hundred prayer calls here and by the time we replay this program there'll be several thousand prayer calls that will have come in i want to include you in this prayer move to that phone right now and call and say here's my prayer need mm. or go to daystar.com and click on prayer we're going to ask pastor sergio and carla of iglesia agua viva Church of the Living Waters there in Lima, Peru. 60,000 people in eight locations. 20,000 seat arena. Revival is happening. The Holy Spirit's being poured out. They're going to pray for you. So make that call right now. As we're here live in Jerusalem, Israel. And we're going to ask God to meet your prayer need. Pastor Sergio and Carla, would you begin to lead us in prayer as we close this program today? Señor, te damos gracias 
Lord, we thank you. Te pido que tú seas respondiendo cada oración y cada petición. We ask that you would answer every prayer and every petition. Yes. Sabemos que tú eres todopoderoso. We know that you are all powerful. Y no hay nada imposible para ti. And that there's nothing impossible for you. Yes. Y okay. declaramos en el nombre de Jesús. And we declare in Jesus name. Que cada petición. That each petition. Que cada oración. That each prayer. Recibe una respuesta. Receives an answer. Una solución. A solution. Una salida a sus problemas. An exit to their problems. En el nombre de Jesús. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, I loved it that they had a bilingual prayer. Didn't you love that? Doesn't that just bless you today? Oh, the Holy Spirit is here. Joni, final thoughts? Well, just continue to call. We love you. The wonderful presence of the Lord here in Jerusalem. And I pray that that's emanating into that room where you're sitting. I want you to know that God loves you so very much. It's no accident that you're watching. And we just believe that God's going to move in your life in a special way. Continue to call. And I want to say thank you in advance for all of you Second Mile partners. We're going to get this studio enlarged for the glory of God. Thank you.